Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. <laughs> the days come, James. The day of reckoning is what I like to call it around these parts. What? McDonald's oh, God. finally got rid of their designer burgers. You know what I'm talking about, James? Yeah, I never liked them. Do you remember the arch? Remember the first time they ever tried yeah, it? It was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. was it the arch burger? What was it? Uh, yeah, it was, the, it was the, the arch burger. That's what it was. Right? Yeah. You're right. And it was shitty. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, how did McDonald's make something that I didn't like? How did they drop the ball? Because I like every single thing on the classic menu. There's not one thing that I don't like. Yeah. Is there on you? I mean, I love the fish the, sandwich. Even. I don't. Oh. That's the only thing I don't like. I don't get down on like fast. Well, that's not true. I was going to say I don't get down on fast food fish, but. I don't know what long you would call John. long dong silvers. Like, I don't know if you would classify that as fast food because it takes a while when you go through the drive through. Sure, there. but that's exactly what it is. And so I love a mayonnaise base, right? Yeah. Yeah, you do. And so the fish sandwich is all tartar sauce and a tiny little cardboard thing. Yeah, it is. That's, I guess, fish. Probably not. Probably not. It's probably sawdust like all the rest of it, but gosh. Yeah. It's fucking good, isn't it? Oh, it's just a vehicle to get that, that tartar into my face because it's not uh, acceptable to just no. drink it. That and ranch, everyone knows. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't you do, can't that do it, so public. you have to pretend to like, oh, I'm, You've got to have I'm something. dipping something in it, but Correct. it's really just a spoon. Yeah, a vehicle. A sure. vehicle for ranch inside your body. So, so they're saying no more. Back to the classic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. I mean, me personally, I was, I'm not going to lie, I, I was offended when they started offering their, oh, this is the Angus burger or the... the don't. The Don't. mushroom Swiss, you know, fuck fest extravaganza, whatever that was. Like, don't need it. Don't need it in my face. I don't need it in my eye line either. When I roll up to the window, I don't want to see that I on the menu. I don't want to see it. And they always ask you, you know, oh, would you like to try our fancy, you know, 24 Club carat chicken and gold chicken dipped stuff. Yep. Uh, buns on this, this, you know, burger that's from a, you know, a, a cow that India wouldn't sacrifice. No, I don't. I have no fucking idea what that is. I don't want that shit. Well, I, don't I want, want something your lies. awful for me. I don't want your lies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Don't tell me that it's, you know, grass fed on the the flat top. You know, we all know it's thrown into some kind of microwave device. Yeah, right? it, is. it is. And with the other, with the classics, that's exactly what they're giving you and telling you. Right. Yeah. And so I don't like the lies. And I'm glad that they're done with the lie of like fresh this and this. So their their statement this morning said we're gonna we're gonna refocus on the on the quarter pounder and the double quarter pounder. That's what's that's what people like. Goddamn right, that's what people Smart. like. You know what I'm saying? Smart. Get off my fucking lawn with that that other mm -hmm. designer burger shit. If I want that, I'll go to who's the guy who's got a rock climbing forehead, the chef on Hell's Kitchen. What's his name? Oh yes, Ramsey. Yeah. I'll go to I'll go to a Ramsey joint if I want a a classic you know classico burger shipped in you know directly after the cow's tits got cut off like I'm I'm good I'll try like I'll try that from Ramsey's restaurant I'm not trying that from the drive through of McDonald's mm -mm. so you can upcharge me and you know that and meal's gonna me be twelve pile, bucks a pile of lies and slop yeah you know and a pile of you know you need to be looking at that picture the whole time to even enjoy it yeah because if you're looking at the sandwich no nope. just looks puke. like a regular piece puke of shit will come out yeah. yeah turn me up in the headphones today james i'm i'm hot today i oh. feel i feel like i'm going hot today james there is it, look we we record this this show this is the monday show that's recorded on on friday right 
the Easter. Monday drop. Yeah, Easter. We got, you know, fam, fam in town, kids, all that other stuff. So I said, hey, Jabes, let's go hot on a Friday. I need turned up in the headphones. You know, I want to go hot on a Friday because I want to free Britney. Are I you- want to free Britney today. First, are you loud enough? I think so. Okay. I think so. Okay, I think the people would agree. I'm at a Stephen A. Smith level, I believe. I think the people would agree that you're loud enough as well. So this free Britney thing, man. Mm -hmm. Look. We've been saying it. I don't want to say you heard it here first, but you heard it here first. And I don't know why everybody else couldn't come to the same conclusion a long time ago. Where I was like, hey, guys, this is a drugged up puppet in Vegas that is on so much medication and they have so much security around her just to get her from the hotel suite to the stage. As soon as she exits the stage, she's within that security with her dad back to the room and then do it all over again. She's been doing this for years, years in Vegas. Mm -hmm. It it was at Planet Hollywood, right? And I think you had said to me when we were out there, you were like, yeah, I wouldn't mind checking out Britney. I was like, no. It's going to be lip syncing and just a drugged up puppet just like this, moving around, eyes wide open. You can see what I'm talking about if you subscribe to the YouTube show, uh, the video show. This is what it's just. uh, 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 And her mic is barely on. They turn it on so it gives her just enough so that she can hear herself in the headphones. But the rest of it is a backing track, Mm -hmm. so she's just lip syncing the whole show. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle of it, the reason why the mic's even on is so she can say, What's up, Las Vegas? Right. What's up? What's up, Are you guys, guys having a good time? I it, am, too. Who, who went to the pool today? <laughs> you know? I don't need help. I am good. Blink, blinking, SOS, Boy. blinking, SOS. Um, so her dad goes into the hospital, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, gets checked in for some type of condition. I don't know what it is, right? Mm-hmm. He doesn't look well. That last doc i saw of them which was like a mini thing on like et entertainment tonight sure uh this is mario lopez and or whatever that is access hollywood i don't Mm -hmm. know what it is um but i know the song really well that's et i think whatever either way Mm -hmm. and it's not britney's father's in the hospital sure and then a couple weeks later now britney has checked herself in because she's too stressed out about her father and she's going through some fucking type of mental crisis or whatever it is right i can tell you what it is when you when you're a drugged up puppet like that Mm -hmm. whose dad is is because he's the legal guardian yeah for all her finances everything Everything. across the board and uh her the mom is i don't know if they got divorced i don't know really what happened yeah well i think they did because the mom seems to be sort of Heading this free Britney situation right now. Yeah, she's liking free Britney stuff. She's mm. liking comments that are like, "Please free her." She looks like she is being kept under her will. The mom is liking these. Yeah, yeah, she's liking the posts. Liking the posts, yeah. liking the comments, following these people. So she seems to be. Uh, they don't seem to be on the same page. Whatever that means. No, uh, look. <sighs> Her deal all along was that she was a child star since, you know, what, 12 or whatever in Mm -hmm. the Mickey Mouse Club. Grew Mm -hmm. up, boom, 18, super famous. Mm -hmm. Oops, I did it again. Sure. Um, You know, she's walking through the hallways in the Catholic outfit, all that shit. She never really gets out. Yeah, 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 but she never got to have, uh, the reason I say all this, she never got to have a real childhood. So once the Timberlake breakup happened and it was like, oh shit, I'm all alone. I don't have my Mickey Mouse buddy anymore. I don't have really any real friends. Yep. Uh, you know, you start running around Hollywood doing coke, all that other shits. Like, well, you start rebelling. Yeah. And you know, Miley Shaved Cyrus your head. did it. Yeah. All these. I think she even cut her hair super short too. But you sort of, if you're allowed to do it in a normal way, like Miley Cyrus or these other people, you're able to rebel against it, do what you need to do, and then come back to it if you would like. Right. right. In on your own term. Sure. I think she was just not able to do that as soon as she had a break or it was getting to be too much. The parents were like, whoop. No, you're going back into this. 
right? Yeah, I mean... And to think of a... How old is she? I think she's... 37. 37-year-old yeah. woman yeah. having a... Le- ha- still being a legal... Having a legal guardian... Yeah, to take care your, of all your finances. That is your father... And everything. Yeah, I mean, everything, yeah. Legal guardian yeah. has to sign for everything. Correct. Has to... Can check you in places, can keep you places. So just that alone is very weird. And I think these, like, Britney fan crazy fans just didn't really understand that right they didn't understand that they were worshiping someone that has mental problems has issues is you know a dependent legally of her father you know yeah and i think maybe that's just is it just coming out now and they're like free Brittany? oh my god this can't be and normal people are I like, know how, yeah, she's I don't had know issues. how anybody like, figured, like, didn't figure it out. Her issue is, is simple. I mean, it's it, like easily diagnosed. She's like a bipolar, but it's like stage one or what, like bipolar the highest. Bipolar one, yeah. Yeah, it's the highest you can get, right? And yeah. I, uh, to me, to me personally, like, her parents, they, she has enough money. Her parents should have just said hey why don't you call it a day let's just take go back to louisiana exactly. that's what the sister did the little sister did exactly. she she got out of all of that shit and was just like ah, i'm gonna bounce and go back to louisiana and have Be a normal the life guardian make sure she's taking her meds yeah. because bipolar that's when you you know kill people and right you kill yourself right. so bipolar it's like yes you do need to stay on your meds and someone should be in your life doing that but Keeping her out in the public eye, I think, is the disservice, and that's what makes it a little. She's made so much money, crazy. though. I, she's good. I mean, we're talking. We can go back to the country. We she's can. She's probably country. worth a good three to four hundred million dollars, mm-hmm. and let alone whatever her perfume and all that other stuff brings in, like because she's got a bunch of oh, trinkets for sale at Target and Walmart and all that other successful stuff. Successful right? brand, to say the she's least. She's fine. Britney Spears is fine. Britney Spears is fine. Let her Britney's, go and live her life, her man. Free Britney. Let her go. Dr. Drew says leave her alone. What do you mean? The parents? Us. The uh, audience, the fans, leave her alone. Let her. I think he was a strong advocate of the dad being in charge of everything. And I think he knows if she is bipolar. He said she's bipolar one, which is like, that's a really big deal. Right. Um, what I don't understand is Dr. Drew saying maybe she needs to get out of the public eye though. Cause that would be the responsible human thing to say, right? Sure. You know, she's having issues. Her, most of her issues are connected to the public eye. Let's let her live her life with her kids, with whoever she wants to be with in the country. Yeah. The happiest she was with was with that dirty ass fetter line. Oh yeah. Remember that guy? A little poo butt ass. What? Little Kevin Federline. I get it. You know the weird thing is when when all of that went down, right? Remember the Kevin Federline stitch? Oh, that yeah. all of that shit. They had the MTV show and, oh, yeah. and or the reality show. I, I forget what network it was. It might have been like UPN or something, right? Something. They were just doing weird shit. Uh, very Bobby and Whitney. Uh, no drugs or anything. They were just partying their asses off, but having fun mm-hmm. and uh, getting knocked up. I don't know how many kids they had together. What two? Two. Two. And then if, if you would have told me watching that show that we were going to cut to 10 years later and Kevin Federline Kevin has the kids, has, has the kids full custody <laughs> um, and that he would be the responsible father that you've never heard anything about. Mm-hmm. That guy is never in the headlines. Never. All he's doing taking he's care of his kids to not be in the headlines, by the way, probably. By but still, dad, yeah. y- you have that option. And you've, you've seen it before where some people go nuclear where they're like, no, I want to be famous. Yeah. And this and is what it is. they keep doing the people interviews. Yeah. They keep getting back like out the, there. Like the Lohan parents and all that other stuff where you're just like, man, I, get out Stop. of the. Yeah. He Stop. could have gone that route and didn't. Like, sure. He's just chilling, playing golf every day, being fat as shit, living oh, his best life. Loving it. And by all accounts, like, because there, there was that girl, that uh, Char Jackson girl that he was married to either oh. afterwards she was like, look. I think before. Well, maybe, yeah. So ma- yeah, she, maybe he before. Left yeah. her. For I Brittany, think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But even her, she came out and said on an interview, she was like, you know, I, it, it's, as much as our relationship didn't work and I was upset about the Brittany thing, he's a great dad. He's a great father. Nothing. I, 
He takes care of his kids. She's like, that's really all I can ask for. And it's just like, all right, cool. I haven't had a, heard a bad word out of that, that guy. Yeah. If you would have told me that 10 years ago, I would have been like, nope, this guy is going to be in jail. Yeah. He's going to be in prison for beating her. Something weird was going to happen with Kevin Federline, K-Fed. I don't know. Yeah. I, that's what I, mean, I would have thought on the surface. like a bad guy. He just would yeah. get to... Oh. Yeah, he just seemed like he could turn the corner in any moment and just be like, "Hey, guess what?" You know, right? Hey, guess what? what? I'm I'm, get, I'm, I'm going to get a face tattoo <laughs> oh, of my child, okay. where it's just like, "Wait, what?" Turn Did you just get a face say, tattoo hey, for what? your child? Mm-hmm. That's what I was okay. alluding to. Okay. Like, oh boy, what are really they going to have? Gold teeth? Fairly yeah. normal, you know. Gained a bunch of weight. Normal. Dad. He's fine. whatever, man. You know, he's got money. Yeah. Living his life out in California. Taking care of two his kids. two kids. I think when you say full time, I mean, I think full time because she's yeah, so busy it is. It is, and yeah. the parents are busy with her business that they actually don't really have time. It, 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 it appeared from that E.T. doc or whatever that the kids come in and out, um, you know. Sure. Like a weekend here, right. A, right. you know, spring break here or whatever, but yeah. not not a like you the school days you're with dad. And on the weekends, you're, it's not like that. Yeah. It's like mom has a little bit of a break. I know it's been a couple months. Come on <laughs> over. Right? She still looks good, too. Her? Like I, yeah. I was surprised about that as well. Oh, yeah. Like she's... Brittany's still Brittany. It's like, man, just free. I know. And I think that's why people are like, it must be the father. Because she looks good. Yeah. And she can hold it together for a... a a couple minute interview in a 90 minute lip synced performance in Vegas. She can hold it things together. And so people are like, she's great. Let her go. Yeah. And we're like, and the parents are like, if you let her go, she will come and kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you want us to free Brittany? Guess what? She's going to free up that she's knife. Gonna hand. Fucking. And it's not Go. funny to like laugh about mental illness, it's not. but the free Britney thing, I think is what we're talking about. Right. Which yeah, yeah, is yeah. let's not, let's not free her. Yeah. I think she, we do say that maybe being a little bit out of the public eye could be good for her, Yeah, but she needs to be, someone needs to be in charge of her taking her medication because all these Cases and anyone that's into murder knows it's always like undiagnosed bipolar. Yeah. Killed themselves, killed the people, killed the kid, whatever. Uh, So keeping her medicated is something that needs to happen. And then maybe free her from you guys. Yeah. Free her from the public eye. (laughs) Let her go like a bird. Yeah. Let that bird fly. Have the memories, have toxic, great song and music video. Yeah. Tell me anything that the Beatles did was better than that. Well, you know, now we're <laughs> now we're uh, stepping over the line, Jabes. I want to reiterate what you said. We're not making fun of mental illness. Um, no, no, no. And not only that, but like to correct that shit with with medication and all that other stuff. I mean, God, it takes a long time. And I don't to get I, it and, right. And whatever and, your body goes through, like yeah. even you know on a small scale with the shingles thing that I had, like that medication, even though. It's not very strong and it, you know, I, a lot of people can take it for whatever reason, man. It makes my body jittery. Right. And it's like, you feel this uneasiness and this kind of shakiness all day. And it's like, you never know what different people are going to respond to medication wise. And, uh, I can't imagine trying to cure a mental illness with meds and being like, all right, cool. Cause I look, I just heard that con- that Kanye Sunday service. The last mm-hmm. one he did, he's doing one at Coachella this weekend, by mm-hmm. the way, if you're out there, which was probably going to be incredible. It's at 9 a.m. And he had said in the last one, he was just like, I've been off my meds for, for 38 days now mm-hmm. and seemed proud of it. Mm-hmm. That maybe the medication was causing him to do other shit in the past. Like, I don't know the right answer on all of this. Sure. And it's really hard to guess. So like, I'm not going to speculate with Britney's meds or whatever it is. I just think she needs not a long bipolar, I think. hard break yeah. out in, in the country and uh, around people that love her rather than prop her up like a, like a fucking robot. Um, but I, I, we're going to go from one thing to another here. One, it's going to be a hard pivot on this one. 
Sorry about that. We got t- we get tied up in the Britney thing. Uh, Mueller report dropped yesterday, Jabes. Yep, and it's not good enough. Still not good enough. What, what am I missing? Something? I don't know. They just keep being like, "There's a lot of things we need explained." I, it, it, the whole report drops. There was redactions in it um, for the audience at home. For those like the people who bitch about redactions, I want to see what's underneath those redactions. I just went through this with the CIA and the Department of Defense for for Matt's book. When you get these redactions back, right? It is because the government is trying to keep something sensitive out of the public eye. They don't give a shit about Trump. They really don't. Like, I, matter of fact, they probably hate him. He was the one who fired the CIA director and said the FBI was bullshit and everything else. If there was anyone out there who wanted to expose Trump, it's probably the FBI and the CIA. Oh, they would love to be like, you guys were right. Yeah, fuck everybody. We did it. We Comey, found it. Comey, all those guys, right? Uh. They would love to. They didn't. And they, and they didn't like, they didn't provide any form of evidence the, the things that are redacted more than likely are like, uh, people's addresses, money, um, personal shit about people where it's just like, Hey, if that gets out in the public, you know, you don't want somebody's address or phone number or bank accounts out there. Like, yeah, that's what most of these redactions are or sensitive material regarding another case where you're saying, Hey man, maybe they were, lo- they were looking into Russia. And they have something on some other Russian agent that they're digging into for some other case or whatever. Maybe those two paths cross when during the investigation. Most of those redactions, that's that's usually what it is. Um, you know, I, I look in the redactions that I did. The, like the, the phrase CIA was redacted, so like we had to change it to the agency in the in the book, <laughs> right? Things like that, where you're just like, oh, that's the redaction. That's what redactions but are. This is how I feel when you're like, give me, give me, I want it leaked. I want to, I want the full thing like of whatever the aliens or whatever, whatever. Yeah. So well, this I want is that. How, but this is how I feel is when people are like, I want to know what's under there. And you just go, dude, it's just fucking an address. Like it's let us do our job. Yeah. And when we do it, take it right. So this is a, this is a classic case of like where my theory sort of works where it's like, okay, they did it. They did their job. You can either trust the government right. or you can now go crazy again over what's under the black lines, which is going to be nothing, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the interesting thing to me about this is seeing the media's freak out over it. That's what I mean. The last 48 hours of, because a lot of people have said, I, I don't understand, like this is over. Why can't the media let this story go? They can't let this story go because they can't. It's like not they, good for ratings. It's not good for ratings. They and need when to you've keep built, you in a frenzy. W- when you've built up your ratings of Based networks, newspapers, digital, all, all, prints, uh, all of it across the board, when you were taking that stance, as you have been for two years, and now your biggest story that is propping you up and propping up your ratings and your numbers and all this shit goes away, then what? Then you have to talk about the real news. I'm going to be realsies with you here. The McDonald's thing was probably the top story today. Today, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are you going to do? Go and report about that when everybody's tuning in to see you talk shit about Trump? They can't, they can't let this go continue. and they're not going to let this go. Uh-huh. You've got to continue on yep. because uh, you still need it's Today's April 19th, okay? The first debates aren't until, I believe, June 20th, somewhere in there. Um, you don't have your, I mean, unless, you know, a, a catastrophe happens, a flood, a hurricane, a tornado or something like that. You're probably going to be light on news for the next three months. Yeah. Um, shit. Two months. Uh, so 60 days. You got to fill up 60 days worth of news. And that's going to be tough. Right. Uh, I, I don't know, you know. I don't know what they're going to do. Because if you keep mining this story for 60 days, I, I would imagine you're going to lose viewers and all that other stuff at this point where you're just like, man, this is over and done with. It's not even trending today on Twitter. So this happened yesterday. It's not even trending today on Twitter. Like it's, it's over. That, that, like that, that's it. You have the report and move on about your business. Now, the, the, the fight in the Democratic House, you know, that they won the House of Representatives between like Ocasio-Cortez and them is like, I think we have enough to impeach. Problem is, you're, the Democratic Party is split in two between socialists and then, you know, 
your normal Democrats. Even the speaker said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pelosi. Pelosi like, said that on 60 Minutes. And she's, she's like, I don't really agree with. She goes, well, there's like five. She's like, there's like five of them. And the, and the woman from CBS there's is like, eh, there's a lot more than five. More, it yeah. is. And the problem is, if you keep dragging this shit on, it's taking away from your candidates that are actually running mm -hmm. to win the office. So if that if that's the strategy going forward, it's going to be a bad hill to die on because you should start focusing in on the candidates. Um, there's been a, a few Democrats who stepped out and said, hey, guys, let's let's move away from the impeachment bullshit and let's let's really start focusing on the candidate who could win mm -hmm. because they're set. You're 17 months away from an election. That's it. Yeah, that that's not a lot of time. Like you've mm -hmm. got to start preparing for, you know, if you don't want Trump in there, you've got to build up your candidate and you, you got to find somebody great that's going to connect uh, otherwise, if you're focusing all of your energy into this stupid shit, it's going to cost you. So part of me hopes, like, hey, keep going. Keep continuing to talk about it because, you know, nobody's focusing on the candidates. I don't know what Bernie or the rest of these guys. I don't, I don't know what they've said the last week because all of it's been about the Mueller report. I, don't, I have no idea what's going on with these guys. I don't like Kamala Harris and them just seemed like so far off the radar mm -hmm. I, like that they don't even exist anymore i don't even see interviews of them it's strange you know it, you should be focusing in on your top four or five candidates uh at this point but uh no one is so we'll, we'll see how this this narrative switches if it does in the next 60 days i don't think it will i think this will drag out because they're stuck in, in particular cnn mm -hmm. cnn is stuck in this story oh yeah um, they need Trump to be real. Buzzfeed had to come out and finally retract a, their story today of, of, uh, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen was directed to make, uh, all of these, you know, things with Russia for Trump and he oh, colluded oh, and all oh, this oh. other stuff. And like, you know, that was when Mueller came out and said, Hey, I don't comment on the media, but this story's wrong. And this was about, you know, two months ago. BuzzFeed was like, no, we stand by our story and we trust our sources and I'm 100% positive. And they printed a, a, a massive retraction today because in the Mueller report, it came out. They were like, oh, Michael Cohen didn't know about sh shit about this stuff. Right. So, you know, BuzzFeed appears to be moving on. Not that BuzzFeed's a fucking news source that's real or, or, or that's going to live past two years. Um, but CNN, I, they're stuck in this, man. I, I I don't know what happens. I'm surprised if I'd be surprised if Anderson Cooper stays around. CNN. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't he seem like he's on the way out doing these weird pieces? Or he should. What What was he, he doing should. where he was just? Oh, the Game of Thrones. He went to the yes. Game of Thrones set. He got dressed <laughs> up like a White Walker. He was. He was in hours uh, and hours of makeup to get a, a twenty. And it was his dream. A and he twenty loved second it. shot of him Looked as a like White a Walker to me. But he was walking around with Kit, looking at all the stuff, mm -hmm. loving it, laughing, touching. That's the first time I've seen him happy on ha screen in a long time. Genuinely happy. Yeah. 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 And I liked Cooper before he, he's, he had to switch to all this bullshit. Yeah. I liked him when he was covering the storms and, you know, he was out in the hurricanes and, you know, I like that Cooper was great. And then he got stuck in this political quagmire and it's like, you know, he tried to do that talk show. Remember? Yeah. He tried and the people didn't want it at that time. Um, I think he could do a little something vice style, like human, yeah. human interest pieces. He's great on six, 60 minutes. Yes. Why not just keep doing those segments? And, you know, again, I do don't really, I don't really believe that he cares about this political shit that much. We had a good friend of ours on, on drinking bros podcast, uh, Marcus Luttrell. And I asked him, I was like, who, who is somebody that the audience would be surprised that you're friends with? And he said, Anderson Cooper. Yeah. Um, on the show, and I was like, "Really? Never would have." And they were like, "No, nah, man. Behind the scenes, he's just a cool, you know. He's just a normal, normal, cool guy. Doesn't talk about politics." And right. I was like, "Huh." He's also rich as the Dickens, and yeah. always well, he's has a Vanderbilt. Been. Yeah. So, you know, when you get into those realms, it's really hard. Like I said, to be a hippie ho socialist, right? Yeah. So I think he, in the beginning, 
really didn't like Trump. I think that is real. I did too. But I think as time goes on, he is smart enough and rich enough to be like, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Don't actually want that yeah. to happen, right? Yeah. But he's also smart enough to go where the ratings need to go. But um, I would like to see him. I think he sticks it out through this election. Yeah. And then, and then after that, he's out of there. Because I, I, I think they, that's probably right. They probably backed up the truck um, for for his contract to stay through the election, like privately behind the scenes. And then they, you know, after that, they were like, look, you can bounce and do your fun shit that you want to do. Sure. That's my guess. Um, I'm sure. That sounds right. Yeah. That sounds right. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, talk about uh, false news stories. Um, this Richard Jewell thing. I know we've talked about this Richard Jewell movie before on the show. Um, the 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 hero from the the ninety six Olympic bombings in Atlanta, okay. who found the guy and then was wrongly accused for being the terrorist, mm -hmm. ended up suing everyone and their mother, won a gajillion dollars, and then moved up into the mountains and became like a local police officer, like a park park ranger or whatever up in up in georgia super crazy sad story died at a young age uh of a heart attack all the stress and the hatred against this guy mm -hmm. his life rights um were purchased by dicaprio okay um to make a movie out of it and dicaprio after is right after wolf of wall street okay um very shortly after it came out you know the success of that or whatever him and jonah hill are friends uh he had jonah hill attached to play richard jewell which sure. is a great, it's a great fit. Okay. Um, that's, that's, that's he, he looks like Richard Jewell. Yeah. Uh, he's got a, he's going to have to throw on about 40 more pounds, but. Um, um, poor, I don't think it'll <laughs> be an issue. He keeps trying to be skinny for some reason. So. No, and he just needs to be that, you know, we don't want him unhealthy. Yeah. You know, the big football size that he was, but little bit more yeah like I, look weird half of the size skinny. he was and accepted probably is where he needs to lie yes. i think right yeah. um so this movie was I, I think originally supposed to be directed by james franco and he was attached you know he was he's went through the whole me too thing and just dropped off the face of the earth i don't know if it's self-imposed or what he did or whatever um but he's staying hidden for a while mm -hmm. and the movie kind of disappeared uh, just popped back up this morning, and Clint Eastwood is actually going to direct the movie. Clint Eastwood doesn't fuck around. If he makes a movie, Listen. he'll be shooting in 30 days oh, yeah. and be done in 28. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> and you get one take. You get, you get two. Oh, you get two? You get two with Clint Eastwood and then moving on. Mm -hmm. And if you fuck it up, then he's going to edit around you, and that's his whole jam. And uh, look, I, I love it. It's a, he, and he only works, at what, what is it, eight hours a day or something crazy? Um, Great. I know. It's amazing. Everybody loves working for him. Everybody loves his style. And it puts, look, it, it puts a lot on the actors. And he lets the actors say, hey, man, if you're going to rehearse this and do this movie, you better be fucking prepared because we're doing two shots and we're moving on. Mm -hmm. So I want the, the, your best performance out of the gate or that's it. Yep. Um, there is no mention whether or not uh, Jonah Hill's going to actually do this movie, but I'm amped that it's getting made. Yeah. And why do you think it's switched from, Di or did Di DiCaprio sells the rights or what? How? Well, he owns the rights, right? So yeah. whoever's going to do it, you know. Uh, okay. So he's still, he's still attached producing in it. that way, producing Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And he was uh, attached and starring as well. Okay. He was, I think, going to play one of the FBI agents who was trying okay. to, to crack this case. And help out Richard Jewell or whatever. So um, it would be awesome if he did. Uh, I think Jonah Hill fits that part. So, you know, I don't want to see like a Josh Gad in there. With, no. uh, yeah. So. I don't think Clint Eastwood would. <laughs> I don't know. Clint Eastwood would. <laughs> but I'm, I was psyched to see that because I don't, I don't know the real thing that went on behind the scenes because the press ran wild with that as well, that story. And it was just like, holy shit. And then everybody kind of just posted little tiny retractions, very BuzzFeed-ish, like, oh, no way, they think it's the wrong person. That story we told you was Whoops. incorrect. Yep, sorry. That's how it was back in the day, right? Whoopsie-daisy, mm -hmm. moving on. And you're like, oh. Yeah, he didn't move on. He sued all of them. I want to say the total was close to like 16 or 17 
publications that he sued. I mean, he went all and in. He, USA Today, New York Times, everything. They all settled out of court. He won millions, millions of dollars. And then moved into the mountains and was a park ranger? A park ranger, I think, for a little bit. And then like a local police officer there. Like he became like a local police officer. Um, okay. In like North Georgia. And... Whew. I would. I. I. I've always been curious about the real story. I guess that's why I'm amped about why this is getting made. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to know. Uh, I wish we. It's kind of. It's very DB Cooperish to me. Like I want to know that story too, the real story. Yeah, but that one we will never know. Will. No. You never will. No. No. Deebs. Deebs is out there, brother. Deeb Coop. Deebs Cooper. <laughs> um. <laughs> people shitting in the streets of San Francisco has become a big thing, Jabes. Yeah. I I was really surprised to read this story. <laughs> Why? It is shocking. We've talked about San Francisco now twice in the last two months on this show. Yeah. It keeps getting worse where I'm like, oh my gosh. So this human shitting in the street thing is now extremely real. Hmm. They've hired poop police. Sure. Um, that are wearing vests. Like there's vests for it and like, hey, we're the mm-hmm. poop police. Mm-hmm. And they're designated, their entire sole job is to clean up human feces on the sidewalks and streets of San Francisco. And ticket people that are shitting? Yes. Or? Mm-hmm. So I, when, I was, I, when I was looking at this article, I was like, how many people is this? Like how many people right. can this possibly be? Currently... There's been 28,000 cases of human shit in the streets and sidewalks of San Francisco. I, I can't believe what's going on, actually. I, I Look, I've been to that city, I think the last time was maybe 2008, mm-hmm. nine maybe. Mm-hmm. 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 Trying to think if I've been there after that. 10, I think 2010 was the last time I was there. Right. Nine years ago. Mm-hmm. I saw a couple of homeless people. I did not see anything like this. Then again, I was shocked when I went back to LA this last time. So, yeah. holy shit. Literally. Holy shit. Holy shit. If this is your problem, right? And you're going to... Because it's a sanctuary city. Sanctuary city and arguably one of the most liberal. Yes. Yeah, because they don't, oh Cities no, everybody's got in, the same rights, same things. even in LA, we've got, you know, it, it's, you've got a mix in LA, but I would say San Francisco has always been pretty progressive and liberal, even as far as California goes, <sighs> right? So and it's here's rich. a really good example of what the world would be, right? Yeah, if you had you if, let if everyone every in exactly, and you let everyone live Sanctuary however cities, they yeah. want to live, and you know, because my 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 other thought was this: is who's paying for the poop police? It's got to be the taxpayers. Yeah, it's not. That's just not free people dedicating their time Mm-mm. to clean up human shit mm-hmm. in the streets and sidewalks of like, oh hey man, and again, San Francisco is crazy rich to live in the city of San Francisco. You gotta be rich as fuck. Rich as. And if you own a fuck. house in the Forget city it. or a townhouse or whatever they you know classify those as, dude, those are millions, multi million dollar places. Imagine waking up and then just having to step over people and, and shit. shit. Um, I went probably around the same time, maybe a little bit earlier than you did. So like 2005, maybe 2004. And Berkeley at that time was a surprise to me. So like I wanted to go to Berkeley, right? Record stores, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that was, I mean, homeless people just lining the main streets yeah. where the awesome record store players and record companies, blah, blah, stores. Um, so I can't even imagine what that may be like now. Gosh. It's definitely, it must have spilled over. Yeah, I mean, look, Cher flipped the other day, finally. she Cher? Yeah. Cher was like, look, we can't have these fucking sanctuary cities and have these people coming in. We can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Nobody can afford this anymore. Uh, and the city looks like shit. Your cities are disgusting now. Um, something's got to be done. And I was like, whoa. Cher. Cher, did you, you, you just turned. 
Because he, she has been railing. Oh yeah, she's railing one her. of the people that goes a little nuts. Yeah, uh, over but Trump she and finally was just like, "Look, we cannot have these sanctuary cities. You cannot put all of these people. They have nowhere to live." Mm-hmm. She said, "We have enough homeless homelessness here in America that needs to be taken care of, um, and the VA and the and the you know and taking care of veterans and homeless veterans first. She was like." We gotta help these people first before we're letting in all these other people because then then what then then they're homeless too and it's just a collection of people shitting and pissing in the streets brilliant well, how'd you come up with that share crazy wow i bet you she she you know she had to take a little drive down through venice or something and it was just like whoa venice or she had to do some kind of show somewhere or uh, i don't Malibu know Malibu doesn't put up with that shit she doesn't have to deal with it in Malibu. So for me, I'm just wondering where she had to go or what happened. She probably had to go into to her agent's office in Hollywood over and over that, again. That drive through Venice and mm-hmm. all that shit. And look, you drive Chaz through Hollywood. Live? Good yeah. luck. Or she went to San Francisco. I mean, where does Chaz live? Did you just drop a Chaz Bono on us. Just saying, where would Chaz? Oh, where where's Chaz? Where's Chaz's dick and balls? On 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 his. Body? His body. Who, who, so he was a he was a girl before. Mm-hmm. Man, I've I forgot about Chaz. I'm, Did you? I'm grateful that you brought up a, a nice Chaz Bono reference. Oh, Dancing with the Stars. That's you know, right. He's got a beard. Oh, the whole thing, man. A nice one. I mean, I can't even grow a beard like that. He he looks. I would have to call her a he at this point because that's probably I the mean, best ones they've it, ever done. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean because there's you're not trying to look like a super hot man. Yeah, you look like a manager at Enterprise, <laughs> and you go, yeah, yeah, I could see that, right? Yeah. P- pudgy, yeah, high and tight, yep, beard. That's right, it really hides a lot of the stuff. Sure. Chaz uh, is back, huh? Chaz, yeah. No, well, Chaz isn't back. Chaz too. isn't back. Chaz is back in my world. About? Don't make me Chaz Bono, you to have a good time, Jabes. I mean, when you get a penis and balls added to yourself, man. I mean, that. Do you yeah. get to pick out your dick? Yeah, I think so. You think so? Yeah, I think that you. You get to you pick know, out your pecker, huh? Now, what is it? Made now, I think it's pulled, uh, pulled out skin. It is. No, I don't know. You don't know what you're talking about. I know the d- vagina is the dick pushed in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> God. Which you love I when I talk it. about I that. I can't hear it. It's reverse docking. Yeah. My thing is this: is like if I if I was gonna do it right. Yeah. And I was a woman switching over. I want to pick my dick. I want to pick my dick and balls. Oh, I think that you do. I think that you absolutely do. I don't know. You think they just like you just, like when you get fake fake tits, right? Yeah. You get to go in and pick out like where it's going pick in them above. Out, talk, talk about under the how, muscle. Uh, yeah. Like over the muscle. How high all that. you want them? Yeah. Low. Where? I want to do that with my dong. If 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 I had that uh, choice of like, hey man, can you show me? Like, is there a glass? case where you're just like hey you can get this you know this model this or dick this model. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 like yeah. you can get the jim morrison it's fun it's exciting right it's a little unkempt but what are they making it out of? i don't know yeah that's what i'm wondering yeah because you gotta i would imagine if you switch you want to get a boner right you got to get it up mm-hmm. blood goes down there all that all that other mm-hmm. stuff like i don't know how that works she may not she may not the dick and ball. No, you gotta get you gotta get a D and B if you if you if she if you have a beard like that. Yeah, I don't know how that works. Yeah, you gotta get that D and those D and Bs on you, James. You gotta get that dick and ball on you. And I look, I I hope he got to pick it out. I'd be pissed now, off. Is it a transplant? Like, do you get it? That's the thing. Does somebody do die in a car accident? It it's like, hey, that or we got this guy's dick and balls who just died in a car accident. Do you want his? And then you, but then do you, do you go in and look at it and be like, eh, I don't know. I don't think it's that. No, you don't think it's that, huh? No, I think it's a facility where you go in for transgender, re, you know, for a gender reassignment. Uh-huh. And the guy over here wants to get rid of it. And the gal over here wants to have it. Sure. And they just sort of hand it through the window, right? <laughs> 
So it's sort of like a drive through situation. There's a hall. So you're saying it's a drive through One side is I don't want it anymore. Yeah. One side is I want it. And then you... And so they, you know, you the the... The doctors and nurses kind of move freely in that hall <laughs> and you sort of pass it through. And I can't think of any other way that it could be. Do you pick it off the screen? Like, is there a screen outside in the drive through where you're like, oh, I'll take that number four dong. I want that, that number four dong. Can we just slide that one on through? Right. How- right. I'm curious. I know. I'm curious. And I it, know you are. Look, if there's some listeners out there who are familiar with this or, or possibly have it, have had this surgery. Yeah, tell me Go ahead and that's... hit up Ross Patterson Revolution on Facebook. Just get, send, send us a message so we can get to the bottom of this. Right. Tell us how that works in that in that uh, hallway. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it is, right? That's the only answer. It's the only logical answer. If you're, You it, don't want it, I want it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give it over, hand it over here. I wonder if they just sew it on and then, you know, sew on the, the dick and balls and they just, you know, rub a little CBD cream on it and just say, you're good. God, is that- Do I, they grow it on the back of rats like those ears? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or ma- mice? How do they do that Who anyway? knows? Who knows? Who knows? But uh, uh man, I mean, we're gonna take CBD. this. Yeah, we're gonna take this full circle with the CBD. I, Carl's Junior's fucking releasing a, a, like a, a series of CBD infused burgers. White people ruin everything, and that <laughs> is the truth. <laughs> What's your stance on Carl's Junior? Um, I don't really think of it. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a stance. The only thing uh, that I've I've gotten down on, I got one of those burgers from the Paris Hilton commercial. Remember that, that the hype around that burger uh, like ten yes, years ago? Yeah, I got that burger and I was like, eh, it's all right. So I'd still go to any other fast food restaurant over yeah, it. Yeah, but would, it's not my bottom. My bottom is is Del Taco. I cannot eat anything hate from Del, Del Taco. Taco. The fries make me think of my childhood. So, uh, with the CBD oil and in burgers. What's the fucking, what's the end game What's the with fucking that? point? Yeah. yeah. There is no Man, point. I've, I want to eat a, a huge burger, but I've also got this nagging back pain. Yep. <laughs> I need what? to constantly, I saw this post, you know, so my friends are selling CBD now, which I'm sure a lot of people everybody, are. Everybody, everybody's selling is, CBD oil. Everyone's selling CBD and it's, it's the new, you know, Windex. It's like the new cure-all, right? <laughs> Uh, Tussin, yeah. whatever it is, where it's like the answer to everything. My husband CBD. had heart heartburn. Yeah. He took medication all the time. He doesn't take it anymore. CBD. CBD. He yeah. had horrible back pain, insomnia. How does this one little thing? Well, so cure for, for, all of for that. the audience, you, you've been taking it to sleep here and there. Yeah. And How's is it, it work? Is it psychosomatic? I don't know. No. Does it make? I don't me, know the answer. Is it just a mental thing? I don't know. You know, um, I would say that it probably relaxes you a little bit. I'll say that's true. I, I, uh, I think it relaxes you a little bit. I don't think it's a cure all no. for everything. No. And it's, it's, personally. Look, it's the hot new thing of weed isn't uh, available in every state yet. Right. CBD is in all right. 50 states. You're allowed to do that. And I think, I think part of the interest, like, especially where we live, North Carolina, right? You can't go into a store and buy weed, but right. you, there's still kind of that thing of like, oh man, but I can get, I can buy CBD. Like that's kind of like yeah, how yeah, yeah. you get loose a little y- bit. Yeah, and, you're and like, you do, you do, uh, you get a like a tiny bit, but it makes you tired. So you know, eating a burger, let's say with CBD in it, I would just be like one way ticket to Naptown, USA. Exactly. Yeah. And you'd be like, oh, I slept so well because you ate a fucking huge burger. With CBD. <laughs> With CBD in it. The CBD may not even have done anything. If no. I eat a whole burger, no. I'm going to be tired. And, and so they, they've said this. Carl's Jr. has come out and said, hey, we're going to just test this for a couple weeks, see how it goes or whatever. I don't know what the, the deal is with that. I've noticed this, though, in a lot of bars that I'm going gone into mm-hmm. you know, for traveling and all these meetups and greetups and shit. You can now buy... Uh, a shot of it of like, hey, would you like a, a shot of CBD to go in your, your drink or whatever it is? And I'm like, man, is that real? And they're charging like four bucks for it, right? 
Okay. And I took a picture of it. I put her, you know, on my Instagram and I was like, man, it's strange. Like I'm at a normal bar, nothing great. Like it's not like a CBD bar or anything else. Like I was at a normal restaurant slash bar and I saw that on the chalkboard menu that was on the thing. And I was like, what? I can just get a shot of that in there. And they were like, oh, everybody's doing it. You know? right. Everybody's doing it. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good on that. Mm. I would rather just get standard fucked up and then smoke weed rather than don't. You don't have to do that to me. Yeah. I mean, is there that many people out there, I guess, that are doing CBD that they're like, man, I want a shot of it at a bar? Yes. There is. Yes. Wow. Once it hits the mom market, which is like this Rodan and Fields, uh, you know, Monet world of mompreneurs. Yes. Multi-level marketing. Once it hits that, it's everywhere. And white people have officially ruined it. Do you know what I mean? So it's already, it's in the, it's in the mom, the mom world. That means that it's everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's uh, gotten to that level. I've gotten more than a few sponsorship offers for Drinking Bros for CBD companies and all that other stuff. And, uh, you know, they send free products to test it out because I've always been a skeptic of it. And um, I'm, I'm the same with you. I, I, I will say this. It does relax you more. Yes. You know? And I think if you're trying to not take pills or something like pills, that. Pills. Yeah. And by pills, I mean like ibuprofen every day, which is bad for your kidney, something like this. But I don't know if it's going to take away chronic, chronic pain. Um, but little aches and pains and insomnia and things like this, I, I, from my experience, yes. The only thing that's going to take away actual chronic pain is actual chronic. You need right. weed, yeah, my dude. Yeah, weed. Yes. So yes. yes. Um, we had Kyle Turley on the show, and he was he was you know talking about the the benefits of marijuana and all this other stuff. But straight up marijuana, he was yeah. just like, yeah. yeah. I, I think he's getting into a CBD coming. A lot of people are. Um, you know, we had Terrell Davis on, on drinking bros as well, where it was just like, he's got a CBD company. I don't know what's wrong or right. I can tell you this. It's not, it's like, you know, between, uh, between all of us, wink between our 1.6 million listeners, I can tell you this, most of that CBD is coming from China. Everybody's telling you it's safe and it's homegrown and all that other shit. A lot of it's, I, I, I think they said, cause I, we talked to a doctor off camera and, and, uh, I'm not going to say who it was, but he had said 70 to 80% of this is, is more than likely being synthed over in China and then sent over here. Yeah, probably. And then you can so, spend top dollar for apparently some, you know, crops out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess, but yeah. it's going to be really expensive. And even then you don't know. It's costly right now, you know? Yeah. I mean, I bought that thing for you. What was the, the drops? Yeah, it was like 30 bucks, 30 bucks for or the 40 little bucks, thing. Think, yeah. and, so, and when you order it from these companies that are like, you know, you don't know where your CBD is coming from. We'll tell you. Yeah. They're like 80 bucks yeah, yeah. for a little thing like that. So it's a racket a little bit. And um, Trying to navigate love, your way through it. Yeah, I would love for it Because each company, just, by the way, says that they're the real deal. They're the real deal. If anywhere else, you're you getting can't crap. trust anything else, yeah. Yeah. And it's a little reminiscent of just straight up getting weed, right? I always right. was like, I never asked where the fucking weed came from. Yeah. Either it worked or it didn't. Exactly. Right? Either I got high or I didn't. 100%. I wasn't like, hi, hi, guy. Yeah. Hi, you. Hey, bud. Hey, I'm not a narc. <laughs> yeah. But I just want to know where the crop and your, um, where you got this from. <laughs> They'd be like, shut up. Shut up, mom. Yeah. Shut up, mom. Shut up, you mom. They need to put a little CBD oil on that uh, Labarni trophy. Gronk, it was at it again yesterday. God, what a little fucking dum-dum. Wow, that guy. He's such a fucking dum-dum. So they, look, they were partying somewhere. I don't know where they were. It was inside a tent somewhere, um, raging. It was some, like, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. nah, you bet, James. You bet. <laughs> were they were James his is on a CBD right now. No, so, I'm not. Um, I, I don't. I, I, I guess his retirement. Uh, something. I don't know. Why did he have the trophy? I, I no <laughs> idea with him. And I don't even. I don't even dig that deep to find out why or where or whatever. All I know is I saw the footage. He was in a tent for whatever reason. They were throwing baseballs. So maybe it was at a Red Sox function. I don't know. Throwing baseballs to the side of the tent. 
He decides while they're throwing it, it would be a good idea to walk up and pretend like the Lombardi trophy was a baseball bat. Mm-hmm. And they were like, ah, he's not really going to swing. He wouldn't. No, just hung it out there for a bunt. And there is a baseball size dent, a perfect, beautiful size baseball dent in the Lombardi trophy. And I think it was a while ago because what they were doing was recounting the story. So they have like an ESPN special, right? <laughs> I saw the... And it was all cut together like yeah, documentary style. So I, I was, saw that this morning and yeah. I was just like... Because all the players were like, no, he's not going to do it. And then he did it, obviously. Right, so they're all telling their side of it. <sighs> Boy, that fucking guy. Is it funny or are they like pissed? I think it's pretty funny. Okay, yeah. I think they think it's pretty funny. Um, you know, there's there's going to be a permanent dent in there unless the owner pays mark, for it. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it is what it is. Like... To me, that's this just per- perfectly sums up the Patriots in that. The Patriots and him in particular. Yeah, just where it's dummy, just a, dumb, just dumb, kind dumb, of a, a dent on society. <laughs> don't give him a fucking trophy and throw a baseball. I mean, he's on a not side smart note, it was, it was more no. exciting. It was more exciting to see than the Super Bowl itself. So good for True. them. They got some somebody. Uh, they got they got a bunch of people to 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 move away from talking about the actual game and and. Uh, it's talking about the dent in the trophy that they won. So great. Yeah. Yeah. Do you get a crime corner for us, James? Oh! Crime corner. Crime corner. Crime corner. Thank you. It didn't cut you off. Thank you for the clean you break. You are learning. Um, there's a couple different things with this story. There always is, isn't there? <laughs> Um, first of all, I need to say who it came from, but he has one of these uh, accounts that's like, I just need to say the letters, J-B-R-Z-Y-S-K with no real name under it. Yeah, all right. All right. So I guess you're deep undercover. I don't know. Or, you know, whenever I hear JBR, I immediately go to John Benet Ramsey. Maybe he's a, a JBR fan. John Benet Ramsey fan. JBR ZYSK? Yeah, maybe it's a JBR Thirsty. Is exhirsty, thirsty. I don't know what that is. He's thirsty for JBR. Either way. Either way, good good work, detective. Yeah. Uh drunk man arrested at Olive Garden after eating handfuls of pasta. A couple things with this story. The yep. guy is my type. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm gonna put up the picture. I mean, this is my exact <laughs> type right <laughs> where was it take a guess Oof, I, let's see naples florida so yep. right gonna, so, gonna say so florida. He's, <laughs> oh boy don't be so surprised my gosh no i am i am i know you're surprised yeah <laughs> so the uh, the police say they arrived at the olive garden to a shirtless man <coughs> shoveling pasta into his mouth with his hands shirtless Ben Paget, thirty-two. Was, again, he, no, my so, type. And I, I get it. Did he walk in and do this, or so he was asking for money outside? Okay, you know, asking for money for food, mas- asking for money for food. My guess is he just got fed up. Yeah, of watching all these people eating family style. Yep, breadsticks, salad, what have you, and um, so. He he was just muttering obs- obscenities and throwing the pasta into his into his mouth. They what I love too is that the officers gave him paper towels to clean up the mess. Really? Before they put him under arrest. So they made him clean up the restaurant. They made him clean up his mess. All yeah, all on the huh, ground. That's new. Yeah, and weird, right? So was it was it somebody else's meal that he just walked in on? And yes, he's just ah, going to people. table to table. You're yeah. So you're eating, enjoying. A hand comes shirtless. The homeless guy that you walked past and didn't give any money to right. is now in your face, and he's in your pasta. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that is going to teach you. I don't know to do the same thing. Don't. I mean, you don't have to give any money. Wow. I'm, so I'm once gonna... he was in the patrol car, he began hitting his head, just slamming his head against the, the metal cage. Okay. So that's why in this picture of my boyfriend, yep. um, 
you see a, a very bloody head. And it's not spaghetti sauce. It is blood from slamming his head against. Got it. Got it. Got it. Well, look, I'm going to commend. I'm going to commend him on one thing, though. You know, I don't want to view this as an entire negative. I'm going to commend him on one thing. Um, He chose a nice restaurant. Like if you're going to go in and eat handfuls of of food off of tables. Oh, for sure. Olive Garden. Great place to do that. Absolutely. There's always going to be a huge gluttonous bowl of something in front of everyone. You don't do that at Panera. No, you're not going to get. What are you going to grab? Handfuls of salad and yeah. uh, soup. Leaves you, you a little crust. They give you a, nothing. A handful of soup. I mean, you could ladle it, you know, sure. but that's tough. And then that's going to be, especially when the police are making you clean it up. Now we have to think about that. And when and you're, if you're wiping your your ass with your own hand, you know, homeless wise, like you wanna, you don't want to be drinking soup out of it. You know, you want yeah, some pasta. Yeah, pasta's fine. Yeah, yeah pasta's that, like that'll go down easier than and you know dookie soup. So yeah, I know. It's my fault. It is your fault, Javes. <laughs> it's my it fault is. that you said that. Yeah. So anyways, thanks, <laughs> J- Jaberski. Jiggy. Good work. Uh, JBR. JBR Skiki. <laughs> JBR. JBR. That'll bring us to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall we, Jabes? We shall. Uh, this one's going out to uh, Gordon Gronkowski, uh, Gronk's father. So I, I don't Good know job, if, if you know this uh, backstory, but like he like, you know, because his other son was a tight end as well. In the oh, NFL. yeah. He's got a completely uh, just he's raised pure, raw, unadulterated animals in this family. Animals dumb as shit, strong as hell. But that's, you know, he's Listen. he's one of these strength and conditioning coaches. And uh whew. You want to talk about doing your job right. Um, Because I will say this. like We joke about how dumb Gronkowski is and all that shit. Like uh, He he is probably a Hall of Famer. World-class athlete. And, um, you know, I don't know. I don't, me personally, I don't think they win the Super Bowl without uh, all of those Super Bowls without him. Right. During this last stretch. Uh, He's the one who took over for Aaron Hernandez. Yeah. So... You know, that's a big position. They don't have, they've never had any superstar wide receivers there, uh, except for Randy Moss that one year, but they didn't, they didn't win the Super Bowl that year. So it's kind of been these last, I would say these last four or five seasons, it's, it's kind of all fallen on Gronk. Mm-hmm. And he, that motherfucker delivered, even the Super Bowl. That, yep. There was one exciting play in the Super Bowl, a long 47 yard bomb or whatever it was. Who caught it? Gronkowski. Looked injured as shit, hobbling down the field. It w- it really was time for him to retire. He looks yeah. He looks terrible. But look, even as and and, not, and I mean terrible in like an injured sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, looks yeah. injured out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he looked like he was fighting some different, you know, heel and uh, shoulder injuries and things like that. And for him to to constantly make those catches and do it and win another Super Bowl, yeah, he deserves to make that dent in the trophy. Good for him. Whoever the dad is. This is also one of the first like dad coaches, you know, that I've seen who forced their kids into doing shit and, and it looks like a normal, well adjusted, loving family. They had that reality show for a while, him and the brother, remember? Yeah. Uh and they all have a blast together. I mean, I there was there was a vanity fair shoot that they did together and it it was awesome and it's just they all look alike. They're all having a blast and it's just these raw Little animals apes. running around, yeah. Little fucking apes, <laughs> and they do. They have a great time, don't they? Yeah, they have a blast. So he did it. He did it right, Gordon. Um, it is possible out there. I don't see it very often, but it is possible. You know, I've run into it a couple times just from coaching the t-ball thing, where it was just like there's some parents who were assholes either on the other team or, or mm. on ours who were. They think their kid's going to be the next whatever, and they're training them to do whatever. And they're like yelling at the three-year-old. Yeah, and they're not and like, like you're, you can tell that's not going to be a loving mm-mm, relationship mm-mm, when that all falls mm-mm. apart, but he, the homeboy managed to do it, so eh, I like it. I like it, too. I like the Gronkowski family, so as much as I shit on them and make fun of Rob Gronkowski and how a dumb, dumb he is, dumb. a little dumb dumb has made a gajillion dollars. He's a Hall of Fame player, and he's... Probably not going anywhere soon. He's going to be doing either some form of weird movies, commercials, TV shows, whatever um, it is for a very long time. We will see a lot of Rob Gronkowski in the future. Probably another reality show. Good. 
Yeah, I know, I know you're amped about it. The other dumb dumb that I liked was uh, who was that swimmer we watched? R- Lochte. Lochte, but you know, yeah, I different liked... kind of dumb dumb. Yeah, different kind of dumb dumb. Weird is because his family didn't force him into swimming either. Like mm-hmm. that was just all on his own, and he did that. But uh, I enjoyed his dumbness in that show. I actually liked that For show. Sure. No. Nah. Look. You know, listen. Look, listen. Look, listen. Look at me. You know, <laughs> listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying words. I'm saying things. And I think I need you to respect women. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Gosh. When we saw that sign of the Beyonce concert at the on the documentary of, of Netflix, it was like, respect. respect Is somebody them. not respecting women We're there good. for Beyonce? Or? We're good. That's what She's I said. She's like one I of the most powerful house. people on the face of the planet, man or woman. I think we're good on respecting. I get disrespected all day. What are you talking about? I couldn't figure out if that sign was because they knew they were filming and like, you know, Beyonce was wearing um, cut off jean shorts. Maybe it was toward let's her. Think was about, it toward her or was it for her? Like, I, I don't I don't know. Let's think about when that performance was, though. Ah, uh, you're right. It was it was, so it was r- last smack. Year? It was yeah, smack in the middle of the I Me mean, Too that shit. That was right. Believe women, respect women. Yeah, yeah, you're too, right. So you're right. All right. I think now it's it, and it's weird that it was jarring now because we were like, oh, still. Yeah. <laughs> we still need to respect them. I don't think so. I don't think anymore. <sighs> the the other strange thing about that to me is like. Anyone who walks into a concert or a football game or a baseball game with a large sign like that and mm-hmm. you're holding it up the entire time, because let's face it, throughout that concert, you could see that sign like maybe 10 more times. Yeah. That person for two hours just held this sign above their head. Mm-hmm. Anyone who does that is like, man, like in football, there's a group of people that always try to get behind the field goal post. Right. Because you know you're going to see it during mm-hmm. a kick, right? And they always, they're holding up the John 316 signs. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, man, not only do the people behind you absolutely hate, hate you. every fiber of your being, mm-hmm. but you have to, to hold that sign above your Bring head. Trying to get a drink. Yeah. Holding the sign. Drink, food, yeah. holding the sign. And it's, that's it's that important to you that mm-hmm. that 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 you know you feel like that's your crusade you can i can you really even enjoy what you're at when you're holding a sign of that that size no no can you even enjoy life the people behind you aren't enjoying life right and the can money you even they enjoy pay life if that's the most important thing to you yeah good respect luck with that respect women that 600 be more broad Coachella please ticket. yeah I need a more specific <laughs> sign. Yeah. Tell me one time. I want it all written out. <laughs> but you personally were disrespected. Disrespected. And then, then we'll, we'll acknowledge your sign in a peaceful way. And then I would say, oh, the one time? The one time? Cool. Cool. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, tune into the video show so you can see this lovely face she's making. Uh, gosh, queen of them. Queen of them. Queen of a thousand faces. Gorgeous. Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables. I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>